Oh, okay. Came back so soon. So, well, I gotta set this back down again. Put the rock over it so it doesn't blow away in the wind. There goes the marker as well. So, well, here we are. Survival of no limits yet again. What I could say for now is that there's really a lot that I could possibly talk about. But if there's one thing I feel like that I probably would have left out in case of certain driving skills that you might need to keep intact. If you need something else to know about other than the fact of how you can escape your car when it's sinking underwater, then well, here's another big tip out there. How to analyze broken brakes. And more importantly, how to figure out how to stop the car before it might crash into something if your regular brakes are not working at all. So here we go. I have used quite a few cars during the last five or six years of my life. I've been driving tens of thousands of miles for quite a long time now. At least a hundred thousand I've probably driven at this point. But regardless of how many miles I've driven, I can never really escape the fact that just maybe anything could go wrong with any of the cars in itself. There have been a few minor problems that I've detected, including large temperature spikes, brake warpage, the possible leakage of certain fluids out there, including antifreeze and coolant, as well as an anomaly of other problems that are associated with certain mechanical problems that can in fact be associated with any and all cars regardless of what mark they're from, regardless of the year they were manufactured in, regardless of the body type or the style or the color scheme or the types of wheels that they have or the types of suspension that they have or the types of engines that they run on or the kind of fuel that they take in. There's a huge list of factors that can apply to just about every car in existence. There's been cars that have run on a lot of different fuel sources, whether natural or artificial. But looking back at a lot of things that I've known about based on the basics of driving and how well my driving skills have taken together, if I could name quite a few that I was able to succeed pretty well in, then well, five skills that I've managed to master pretty well would include the art of hydroplaning, driving in extreme total darkness without the usage of lighting, the usage of fog, or simply put, the gliding on ice, in case I ever get into a problem like that. And then of course, there's the fifth, and final skill that I feel like I've achieved, driving even when the car is broken down. There has been a lot of problems that I've had, whether minor or major in a way, that I've associated with a lot of cars that I've driven in my lifetime. But if there's one that I have not at all encountered, total brake failure. Whether the brake clamps cannot press down on the pads hard enough, or maybe the clamps are broken down entirely, or the pads have worn down to the point where they're just drilled all the way through, that could be a serious problem. Anyone out there who has driven cars that are very, very old and have not been repaired for a long time should probably take the time to repair them right now because you just never really know. Braking accidents are absolutely crazy. I've witnessed a lot of them happen. A lot of people have failed to stop on time and as a result they might have hit someone in the rear or the front or they might have t-boned them on the side or even piled them on top. But of course aside from the typical people that fail to stop on time before impacting with someone else or any other drivers as a whole, there's also the point where someone's brake might not work because either there's something stuck underneath the pedal or maybe the brake itself is just malfunctioning. Whether if it's from some sort of coil that's associated with allowing the clamps to break down onto the pads, or if there's fluid missing that will cause the brake clamps to press down on the pads, or of course if the pads or clamps themselves are destroyed, then those are just chances that you might have when it comes to vehicular manslaughter or any other possible type of impact. So of course, that just goes to show that there really are in fact a lot of ways that you could possibly hurt your reputation on the road or you might actually end up in either a hospital or even a graveyard. So, let me just tell you a few ways that you can possibly fix this stuff up. First of all, if there's anything inside your car that might actually be blocking the brake pedal from being pushed all the way down, then well, 
scrub underneath it with your foot, and then try to press it down again to make sure that it works properly. And if it does, then well, okie dokie. But aside from that, there are of course the other problems that associate with brake pads failing to stop the car on time. If there's brake fluid missing, be it if someone had drained it intentionally, or if it had been drained by mistake, then well, try to fix up whatever had come out and replace the brake fluid just like that. And then of course there's the problem of which that the brake pedals or pads or clamps might be destroyed completely. Well in most cars, even to this day, there is of course the handbrake. A brake of course that you can use as a backup in case the primary one ends up failing. Of course if your car has one of those then well, that's good to know. So you can use it if the primary one is not functioning the way it's supposed to be. But if your car does not have one of them, then well, there are a couple ways that you could possibly go through with this. Of course the brake pedal itself, even if it does still work, you might still need to press it down if you want to put it through the transmission. So of course, having your brake pads or clamps or rotors, pistons, calipers or whatever destroyed is definitely not a good sign, but of course if you can press down the pedal to the point where you can activate the transmission whether by putting it through a different gear, which will in fact cause the tires to screech to a halt, then well, that might also be a good idea. It can definitely prevent impact, but it might cause a lot of wear and tear on your tires. So of course, please be sure to be careful with that if you can. If your tires are pretty much out of shape, then well, that could be another good sign that you might need to get to the mechanics as soon as possible. So of course, that just goes to show, anyone out there probably shouldn't drive. But if they do in fact have the privilege to drive then well, you should not be concerned about them, but about your own driving. Because your own driving might impact theirs. And with theirs impacted, they might actually learn a few things here and there. Of course there have been a lot of drivers that I've had close contact with, and I mean very close contact. Especially during the winter time at one point where I was very close to getting T-boned while driving around my 2001 Grand Cherokee Laredo 4x4. And of course there were the times where I have hydroplaned or driven in total darkness with no lighting at all because those didn't really work so well. Or even when I'm just driving through fog. There are driving skills of course that I've taken a lot of time to master. And of course I will in fact take some more time to see if I can in fact try to go through a lot more before I'm possibly through with driving. Because you never really know. There might be a lot of things out there that I might actually want to drive to. Just so I can at least practice my skills. Because seeing as this is pretty much my sixth year into driving itself, or at least being behind the wheel of an actual vehicle that you can take out onto the road and just operate, like any other machinery, then well, I gotta say that I'm still a pretty long, long, long road ahead before possibly retiring from driving. There's still a lot of things that I have to do out there whether I'm on the road or not, that I certainly would not want to miss, or I would just want to get on time regardless if I'm in fact going to be there early or late. So of course, driving is one thing that I really need to have in my life, especially with all the things that I commonly do in my everyday lifestyle, especially with my jobs and the many other things that I do just for fun or for charity or otherwise. Driving is part of the job here. It's also part of my everyday lifestyle. And I never want to have to let it go, regardless of the reason for it. So there we are. Yet another time for me to go ahead and talk about some more stuff for Survival of No Limits. But if you want to see more, go down to my channel. Regardless of what it might be, then make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, and stay on the Hollywood side.